Hi everyone, it's Mrs. Fitz from the STEM Connection with another STEM Quick Win STEM professional interview today. And joining us today, we have Stephanie Shook, who is a restoration ecologist at the Nina Mason Pulliam Eco Lab at Marion University. Hi, Stephanie. Hi, hi. Thanks, Thanks for, for joining us. us. Yeah. So, a uh, restoration ecologist, why don't we just start there? Can you explain a little bit what that is and what you do? Sure, yeah. So, um, what a restoration ecologist does is they restore essentially they restore the natural environment. So um, it could be an area that um, has been degraded in some way, natural areas. So that could be a forest or a prairie, any kind of um, natural habitat. Um, if you're talking about Indiana, um, we have all those that have those habitats, wetland habitats. I've got the eco lab behind me. So this is where I work um, and the area that I restore. So we have about 75 acres of restored forest and wetland and prairie. Um, we also have a creek that runs through, so we've got some riparian areas. So, um, and all of that, it's in the middle of Indianapolis, so it's all been degraded in some way. You know, it was actually the pond behind me um, was a pasture, um, and there were cattle on it over 100 years ago. So, wow. um, so a lot of um, these areas may have been farmed, uh, maybe they were um, uh, cut for some other reason. Um, maybe there were buildings on it in one time and now there aren't. And so we remove invasive species um, and then we uh, plant and install native species to those habitats to restore the function of that. So you want to have a lot of diversity with wetlands um, and forests, so lots of different types of plants so that you can support lots of different types of wildlife. Great. So I know right now might be a little different because we're all kind of doing a, a lot more from at home, but kind of in normal times, uh, what would your day look like? How would you spend your time at work? Oh, I love that question because I, I don't feel like I have a typical day ever. <laughs> um, I will say though, I have a typical day like in the spring and a typical day in the summer and a typical day in the fall. Mm -hmm. um, so because we have different things that we need to accomplish depending on the season. Um, okay. So like it, we're in spring right now. So typically I would be out there um, and we would be doing, we also do field trips um, and a lot of public programming. So I do a lot of environmental education. So we might have school groups out um, okay. to teach about restoration. We do a lot of talking about restoration. Then we have a lot of students that help us um, do the restoration. So they might help us install native plants or maybe plant trees. Uh, so um, I also work with a lot of the undergraduates at Marion University. Um, so I have a lot of interns that work with me and they learn things like plant identification. Uh, they learn different types of restoration techniques. So how to remove certain invasive species um, and then what to do after that. Um, and then other things like maintenance, right? So we have 75 acres, so we have to uh, clear the trails, make sure they are clear for people so they can walk through, because as you could probably imagine, um, you know, mid-summer, uh, the eco lab starts taking over the trails. So if you don't clear that pathway, um, then it'll take it over. So we remove a lot of things from the trails, and that might be trees that have fallen down too, um, and really any other type of, of maintenance that we need done. Yeah, great. So a lot of time outdoors. Which is a kind of lot fun. of time outdoors. Yeah, yeah. Um, we can spend time outdoors all year long, but it just kind of depends. We we don't usually are or don't usually spend a lot of time outdoors in the winter time. It just kind of depends on the weather, um, and really, it depends on the weather regardless of whether it's spring, summer, fall. Um, so uh, it's uh, every day is is somewhat different, but then we have those typical tasks that that we have to do. Yeah, uh, I kind of like the question, what's your favorite thing about your job? Oh my goodness, um, hmm, that's a good question. Favorite thing about my job would probably be that it, well, <laughs> that it's always changing. So I get bored easily. <laughs> um, yeah. And, and I, I really like, um, I mean, I'm not much of a winter person. I it, When it's cold, I'm a little wimpy, um, but I like having the seasons um, because <laughs> it helps, you know, kind of break up the year. Um, and you never know what's going to happen. Sometimes I go in thinking I'm going to be, be doing one thing 
And then I realized that the beavers, we have a, a colony of beaver on the pond, um, they might plug up something and, and flood one of the trails. So then I might have to undo some of their handiwork, which it's okay, I, I love the beavers. Um, but that's the funny thing is I'll go in thinking I'm gonna do one thing and go, oh, well, the beavers uh, flooded this trail. So I guess we have to work on that. <laughs> so so I, I like that. And then I'm always learning. So, I mean, mm -hmm. um, there's always something for me to learn about or to, to um, uh, teach others as well. So it's um, always learning, always doing. Yeah, great. And then can you also share with us a little bit about your STEM journey, kind of how you got, like, when did you kind of know you were interested in ecology or kind of how, what was your path like to kind of get where you are? So um, I wasn't always a restoration ecologist. Um, I didn't always know what restoration ecology was. Um, mm -hmm. So I'll try, I've done a lot of really cool things that, that got me to where I am. Um, and I'll try to keep it short. <laughs> uh, so, <laughs> I, my undergraduate degree was in anthropology um, and because I wanted, I was focusing on primatology. I wanted to be Jane Goodall. So if any of you know who Jane Goodall is, she's one of my heroes. Um, and so I thought, I knew I wanted to do field work in some way. I wanted to work outside. I wanted it to be um, involved wildlife or something like that. And um, I thought that's where it was. And so I tried that um, and that was not the field work for me. <laughs> Yeah. Um, it's it, it takes a certain type of person and you have to have a lot of patience and it's a lot of the same thing over and over again um, you go out and you watch primates for eight hours a day and you write down for you know every 30 seconds what they're doing um, and mostly it's sleeping um, so <laughs> and of course it's more exciting than that in different ways but it, that wasn't I knew that that wasn't what I wanted to do. So mm -hmm. um, I uh, joined the Peace Corps and that's where I started um, really with my environmental education. So I did a lot of um, environmental education um, with the school in my village. Um, I also worked with um, women in development. So we did a lot of, we um, gave scholarships to young girls and did take our daughters to work conferences. Um, so that was a really great experience. And, and when I came back, um, I, didn't know what I wanted to do. Um, so I, but I knew I wanted to work with animals. I always did. So, um, so I did a lot of things. I pretty much did everything you can, everything in Indianapolis that had to do with animals. So I worked for the Humane Society and that's mm -hmm. where I started um, learning um, training um, methods and behavior. Um, and then I also um, started working at the zoo. So um, I worked at the zoo, um, Indianapolis Zoo as a zookeeper um, for several years. And um, and, and loved it, um, but I, there was something missing. I really knew that there was this field work that I, I wanted to go out yeah. and do. Um, and so I, I went um, back to school and I got my graduate degree um, uh, in natural resources and environmental management at Ball State. And that mm -hmm. was where I learned um, that I loved identifying things. So um, I didn't really know what all those plants were. Mm -hmm. And now I do. I mean, not all of them, but you know, that's <laughs> yeah. where I learned that, yeah. ooh, what, what's that plant? And what does it do? And can I eat it? And what's that plant called? And who eats that? And who needs that plant? And same thing with the trees. You know, I, I started being able to, de, um, to learn the different types of trees based off of their bark and their leaves and things like yeah. that. So, and that's where I learned about invasive species and then learned about all the native species we have and the different types of habitats. And so it just kind of, that, that was where it, that's what, that, that, that was where it really um, became real for me. And I learned mm -hmm. that it was something that I could do. Yeah, that's great. So in Indiana, we have our employability skills standards. So those that, that might not know what those are. And so I had shared those with you, Stephanie, and I know that you've seen those before. So can you identify maybe one or two that are important to be successful at your job? Sure, yeah. Well, I mentioned that um, every day can kind of be different um, and you have to kind of you have to kind of roll with the punches. So adaptability is one thing that you just have to have, especially if you're working um, in any um, any discipline outside, um, you have to be able to deal with the weather or um, if you're working with volunteer groups and things like mm -hmm. that, things change or, um, you know, you thought you were going to have 30 people and you only have five or <laughs> you thought it was going to be a beautiful day and then here comes a thunderstorm. So. <laughs> 
Um, it's just, you know, it's never, it's never ending on um, what can happen that you didn't expect necessarily. So being adaptable, um, I say, would be one really big thing. Mm -hmm. And then the other thing is perseverance. Um, mm -hmm. Anybody that works in an environmental field, you have to have perseverance um, because you're, everybody's passionate about it, right? You know, I don't do this for the money. <laughs> I do this because I love it. Um, and, and I'm passionate about it and I'm passionate about learning um, about wildlife and teaching others about it. Um, and sometimes not everybody is as passionate about it as I am, um, or we don't always have as much money as we want to be able to do the things we want. Um, so you, you have to really um, be able to persevere and kind of get through those things. Yeah, that's great, thank you. And then another question that we like to ask our STEM professionals that we interview are, uh, do you have any examples of tools or technology that you use and can share with us? Yes, yeah, so I do have a few things here. So um, field guides. Uh, so I love the golden guides. So I'll show you a few golden guides. I have like a big stack here. Um, I love the golden guides because they're cheap. So I got this one for like $2 at half price books. Um, and there are so many of them and they're great for lots of different ages and they're not very big, right? They're pretty little. So you yeah. can throw them in your backpack and go out. Um, so these are one of my favorites, really any field guides. Um, these are good to start out with, the golden guides, but then um, also I've got lots of field guides. So what I suggest is if you can, um, so this is 101 Trees of Indiana. So if you can get as local as possible, because that's gonna help you to identify things. Um, so like if I, I have a Butterflies of Indiana guide as well, you know, if I had a Butterflies of North America guide, um, and I was in my backyard in Indiana, it might be a little harder for me to get to that species or even that genus. So um, having something that is more um, geared toward, towards what I would possibly see in my uh, backyard is really great. But yeah, field guides are awesome. They're now, they're apps now for lots of um, different types of ways to identify different animals and plants. So um, there's a, there are a lot more um, things that are available than books, but the books are always the first thing I go to. Yeah, thanks. And then finally, the last thing, since a lot of our families and kids are at home, do you have a suggestion or idea of what kids or families could do kind of in their own backyard or in their neighborhood to kind of work on the skills of an ecologist or kind of do something in your realm? Yeah, so go out and observe. Mm -hmm. um, take one of these books with you. If you really want to, you know, take a day to learn about spiders or take a day to learn about wildflowers. And you, it doesn't mean you have to go to this pristine park um, that everybody goes to. You don't have to go to Turkey Run. You can go outside your, your back door and, and look at different types of plants and um, compare them. What, why does this one, you know, what are the leaf shapes of this one versus the leaf shapes of this one? And what's the flower um, structure versus this flower structure? And um, you can look at different trees and, and compare the bark of this tree versus the bark of that tree. Um, you can watch an ant and see what they're doing. So, um, and you don't have to, even if you don't have a backyard, you can still do this if you look out your window, if you sit right. on your porch. Um, you know, there are there are trees everywhere. If you don't have trees, you probably have tiny little bugs, like I said, ants or um, worms or roly polies or anything. You know, watch them. What are they doing? Um, who are they interacting with? Um, what do they look like versus other things that you're seeing? Are they making any noises? Um, just different things like that. So that's what ecology is, right? So biology is a study of all living things. Ecology is, is studying the relationship between those things and their environment. And that's really important. Those things are really important to learn and to think about when you are restoring an area um, or if you just wanna learn more about ants or spiders yeah. or trees. You have to know who relies on that tree, um, how they're using that tree, um, and, and who, who does that tree rely on? Yeah, I think that's great, especially in, I mean, this time of year, that's perfect because there are so many changes that are happening that when you look out that window or go see what's in your backyard one day, I mean, a day or two later, you could see some completely different things with what's blooming and growing and the birds and the butterflies that are coming back and all that. So even just kind of thinking about from one day or one week to the next, um, yeah. how things change, what they might That's look like. Right, yeah. 
And there, are, and, and again, you don't have to go to a pristine area to do that. You can see this happening in your backyard. I yeah. went out to my backyard the other day and I watched an ant um, getting nectar from little spring beauty flowers. And he would go from one flower to the next, to the next, to the next. And I just thought, huh, well, okay. I didn't, I didn't know he did that. So now I know <laughs> that there are ants that also um, benefit from the spring beauty flowers. That's great. Yeah, so I love that. And hopefully, especially kind of this week being uh, celebrating Earth Day this week, those are great things to go out and kind of see the, the beauty of our Earth and think about what we can do to, to keep it that way, kind of healthy and beautiful for uh, all the creatures that, that live here. So Stephanie, thank you so much for joining us and I hope you have a great rest of your day. All right, thank you. Thanks.